Good morning, ICS, and a very warm welcome to the International Church of Shanghai Sunday service. A very warm uh, Happy New Year to everybody online. And uh, my name is Chin Tak, and uh, as we continue to worship online today, uh, as we await the restart of our church, as soon as we hear any further news, we will let you know. So we thank you again for your ongoing patience and prayers. In just a few moments, our praise and worship team will lead us to in preparing our hearts to come before the Lord. Uh, and Pastor Daniel will bring us another message from the Lord. So um, before that, let us uh, share with you some announcements for your information. A kind reminder that ICS is a multi-denominational Christian church in compliance with local government regulations, ICS online services and events are only open to holders of foreign passports only. Are you new to ICS or are you joining us for the first time? Or perhaps uh, you are already a member but you are looking to get more involved? Do join a cell group. We have uh, over 20 cell groups in, around, that we run around the city on a weekly basis. Uh, so if you'd like to find out more about our cell groups, and, uh, and the location, the demographics of each cell group, uh, do uh, scan the QR code on the, uh, shown on the screen and our staff will get you connected. Uh, youth ministry has been renamed as uh, from Anchor to Trailblazer uh, and it will cover various uh, age groups. The Trailblazer Juniors are for kids from 10 to 13 years old and Trailblazer Seniors for those from 14 to 18 years old. Uh, when the church services are reopened, Trailblazer will have united worship for uh, 10 to 18 years and then split up into uh, junior and senior sections for preaching uh, that is relevant to their age. We will also resume uh, the um, monthly opt-outing event. Trailblazer has been providing online youth word sharing by the, the, for the different age groups which is similar to what ICS Kids Church and Adopt Services are offering. The youth word sharing will follow the trailblazer topics which are biblical applications for teenagers. It will deal with the challenges that they are facing in school today. For those that have been uh, subscribing to ICS uh, Daily Devotionals, uh, please note that uh, you can also access uh, the ICS Daily Devotionals via the ICS website homepage uh, link or you may also scan the QR code as shown on the screen to access the de devotionals. So I'm sure you'll be really blessed by all this, uh, uh, by the Daily Devotionals. Big in the life of our church is the Expatric Center or the TEC, which is a community platform that uh, organizes events throughout the year uh, for expatriates. ICS is one of the ambassador centers of TEC and we would like to take this opportunity to share a few announcements with you. The TEC's uh, bilingual volunteer mini program, BLESS, is finally here. It combines resources to enable the wider community to contribute, support and do good works in Shanghai. Join BLESS and uh, start your volunteering journey now by scanning the QR code below and stay around for more exciting features to come. Last but not least, we love to thank all our members for your tithes and offerings. It makes a real difference, uh, not only to the operations of our church, but also to allow us to be blessed, to bless the community around us. Please kindly, kindly continue to uh, give your tithes and offerings through our Alipay account uh, via the QR code as shown on the screen here. Uh, just leave the Alipay remarks in the remittance blank. Thank you so much for your support. If you prefer to give your tithes and offerings via bank transfer, please scan the QR code as shown on the screen for bank account information. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us at the email shown on the screen. Thank you. And to prepare our hearts, uh, let's come together for a word of uh, prayers uh, as we get ready to for the worship and the service. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for today, Father Lord. We come to give you all thanks and praise for who you are. We thank you for 2021. And as we come to 2022, we want to thank you and uh, seek your will in our lives continuously, Father Lord. We pray for the service today, Father, uh, as um, 
Pastor Daniel delivers the message. We pray that you anoint him uh, with the Holy Spirit and guide him and uh, to deliver the message to us, Father Lord. And we pray that you'll prepare our hearts to receive your words, Father Lord, so that we do not just list, be a listener of your words, but we act upon it, Father Lord, and make a difference in our lives, Father. We thank you for this time together. We pray that your spirit will be there to minister to each and every one of us, even though we are not physically together. We know that you are. You are there with us in each of our living rooms. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you very much and have a wonderful time worshipping the Lord. Thank you. Rejoice. 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 Child is born and life begins. Saving one born to us this day. Rejoice, rejoice. Heaven's grace has come to us. King is here, our guide, Emmanuel. In our grace, we celebrate the countdown. Rejoice, it's Christmas time. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh. The bells ring out, it's Christmas time. Rejoice, rejoice. To the world, the light has come. Go, renew, sing the Savior's love. Rejoice. We echo now the angel song to pray to the King, the guy Emmanuel. In our praises, we celebrate the countdown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Christmas, whoa, 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 sing out, rejoice, it's Christmas time, whoa, 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 let the bells ring out, it's Christmas time, Christmas time.
For 
even in your suffering, you stood in the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Praise the Father. And the angels stooping home For the souls of all who come To the fathers are restored And the church's cry was born Then the Spirit lit the fan Now this gospel truth for hope Shall not need, shall not fade Like His blood and in His name in his freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who was resurrected in me Praise the Father
So great, let's sing how great. Father, we praise you and thank you for a brand new year. Thank you for watching over us and journeying with us in the year 2021. We give you praise and thanks for your faithfulness and your goodness. We look forward to a fantastic year in 2022 because we know that you change us not. We believe that, Father, you have new plan and purposes for us. We will continue to pray for the reopening of ICS. We pray that, Father, the authorities will look favorably at us, even as we have already submitted our application for the reopening at uh, Millennium Hotel. We ask that, Father, you will continue to help us to work closely with them in order for us to regather at the new 
premise. We give you praise and thanks that we can continue to worship you with our tithes and our offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm sure many of you would have heard of friends migrating to another country. They might be in the process of applying and some has already received their new identity card. It will take some time to get to know the new country that they have adopted to be a permanent resident or a new citizen. Likewise, we need to quickly make adjustments or have a paradigm shift in living out our new identity in Christ. It is a good time to have this paradigm shift at the first week of 2022. I believe it will be good to remind ourselves constantly regarding how we are to live out this new identity. In fact, our lives will be dramatically different if we are to live out the new identity in Christ. Therefore, let us spur one another on to live it out. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 24, reading to you from the New King James Version. It says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated, alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lewdness, to all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard of Him and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Christianity is not a religion. It is not an observation of a set of law or philosophy that help us to change from the outside in because the sin nature is in our heart. The issue of sin is in the heart. It cannot be changed from the outside through a set of law if not Jesus would have died in vain. It is impossible to be good or righteous using the law, good works, or philosophical thoughts. Christianity is having a restored relationship with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We are changed from the inside out. It is His shed blood that has given us a new identity before God. This new identity is in the inner man which is constantly referred to as the new man. That's the new man that the Apostle Paul talked about in this passage. He made a comparison of lifestyle between the old man and the new man. We are encouraged to leave out the new man and his lifestyle. It does not happen automatically. Put off the old man, verse 22 says, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. The old man lives for himself. It is all about I, me and myself, even for a married person unless we die to individualism. The selfish self, or in religious term, sin, lives independent of God. It has always got to do with our self-worth, self-esteem, our security and our looks. We want people to love, admire and respect us. We long for the admiration of men. We want to be known as a mover and shaker in society. We lust for all the worldly goods and positions so that we are made known to be a man of power and wealth. Yes, it has happened in, in Apostle's time, Paul's time, and it is no different in the 21st century. We are in pursuit of success and significance. We will stop at nothing when all that is in our mind is to pursue wealth, success and significance and power. There will be no moral absolutes in our lives. We are blinded by our pursuit for significance. We might not even have good moral values and principles because we think that these will hinder our success. Let me give you an example. There was a parent who told the teacher not to emphasize too much on integrity at the kid's summer character camp. The parent says that she will want her child to survive in this world where we should not inculcate or impart too much values on integrity to her child. Of course, it was shocking to hear it from the parents because that's how the people in the world has degraded to such a state. It means she wants her kid to be successful in his or her career or business regardless of what it takes, including cheating or be known to have a lack of integrity. Honestly, there's nothing much left 
once the person's character is called into question. I guess many have placed a higher value in success more than character. Why is it called deceitful lust? It is deceitful because we thought we will be satisfied and feel secured after obtaining all the ones in our lives. We, want, we tend to compare ourselves with others. We thought people will respect or admire us more if we are richer, smarter, known among the wealthy, then our lives will be better. There are individuals who attempt to numb their emotions, insecurity, rejection and pain when everything fails to satisfy the emptiness in their hearts by getting into substance abuse. The lust or the gratification will never stop because we will always long for more of it. In fact, we want to be better than others so that we are the centre of attention just like what Lucifer wanted before his fall. Meanwhile, we thought those lustful things will be good for us or will help us but it ends up destroying us. It corrupts us. The love of money is the root of all evil. We are lost and fall into eternal damnation if Jesus is not the Lord of our lives. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 16 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Remember, it was Satan who showed Jesus the world and all that it offers as a form of temptation. All temptations come through the eyes and it works through our emotions to succumb to it. We tend to desire and lust after what our senses feed us. There are the longing, strong desires, impulses and passionate craving that comes through our senses. These strong desires can be towards material goods or a person. The old man is governed by the sin nature and is a slave to sin. The old man is dictated and driven by the need to gratify self and at times the need for instant gratification. This is one of the reasons why many people, especially the young executives, are in debt because they have used their bank overdraft. It is to gratify their want of bags, watches, cars and to maintain their lifestyle. We take pride in our assets, achievements and the lifestyle that we lead. Mammon was our God before we received Christ. You would remember the story of the rich young ruler who was asked by Jesus to give everything away and follow him. Jesus wasn't against the rich young ruler's possession of great wealth and power. Jesus was dealing with the God of Mammon in the life of the rich young ruler because he cannot love God and Mammon at the same time. Therefore, he had to give up serving the God of Mammon and follow Jesus wholeheartedly. It was unfortunate that the rich young ruler couldn't give it up because he had great wealth and his security was in his wealth and power. The rich young ruler's identity was in his wealth, power and social status. It was too much for him to give up. Many are still struggling with the same problem today. The old man's security was established on what he possessed and achieved. We were driven to make as much money as possible. The old man is tied to the old identity where our understanding is darkened. The thinking of the old man is closely associated with the world values and principles. Therefore, we will most likely have our identity based on our self-worth and achievements. We identify ourselves with our academic achievements, corporate position, accolades, business success and net worth. We pursue mammon and all the worldly lusts that are deceitful. It means life will still be empty despite spending our whole life pursuing wealth and success. It is vanity of vanities because all these are perishables. We will not be able to carry with us all these into eternity. That was our old identity. We were a slave to sin. We were in the kingdom of darkness dictated by our sin nature and Satan was our God. We identify in our doing and a sense of self-worth. We were tormented and emotionally. We were tormented emotionally because we feel insecure whenever we lag behind others. This insecurity will cause us to behave irrationally at times and harsh towards others. It could cause us to live immorally just to be accepted or to be known as a person of significance. Example: There was a polar bear that belonged to the Russian circus. This polar bear has been kept in this 12-footer cage since young. 
He was allowed to be out during training and for his act in the circus. They took the cage off at the Arctic to release him when the Russian circus went bankrupt. Instead of running away from his captors when they took away the cage, this polar bear continued to walk in this imaginary 12-footer cage and was waiting to be fed. It has never lived in the Arctic, which should be his natural habitat. It has never learned to hunt for food. Obviously, this polar bear didn't survive because it wasn't adjusting to the new lifestyle and environment. Likewise, we might still be living in the old man and his lifestyle after we have received Christ. The devil will attempt to deceive us that we, are still, that we still belong to his kingdom. We are like the polar bear. We should live our life differently once we are set free from the bondage of the evil one, changed into the new kingdom and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. We should start living out our being in Christ. Put on the new man. Verse 23 to 24 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. It is very difficult to wrap our heads around this truth where we are seen to be righteous and holy in Christ. It is very obvious to every one of us that we are imperfect, weak and stumble occasionally in our lives. We are renewing our mind every time when we listen to the teaching of the Word and make adjustments to our lifestyle. There is the new man after we are born again and it happened in our heart. While we are living on earth, but we do have a heavenly and spiritual identity. First and foremost, we need to know where this new identity comes from and how do we apply in our daily living. This new identity is in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. This new identity or new man is how God has chosen to look at us. He did it by blessing us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. There are many spiritual blessings that we have received in the heavenly places where we are able to apply and walk in it now. He expects us to live through this new identity. Now, we have covered some of the new creation realities for the past few weeks. For example, we have given you this um, canvas board with our new identity in Christ as a gift. You will be receiving it from your cell group leaders and you will also be able to pick it up from the church office if you do not belong to the cell group. Now, what does this new identity include? He said, God tells us that He sent Jesus to die for me because I'm worthy and priceless. I will not perish but have everlasting life. I'm a child of God. I'm justified by faith and I have peace with God. I am accepted in the Beloved. I am a joint heir of God, joint heir with Christ, and will be glorified with Him. I am strong in the grace of God. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. In Christ, I am His workmanship. Therefore, He has a good plan for me. God shall supply all my needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I am confident and have the confidence that He hears my prayer when I am doing anything according to His will for my life. May I encourage you to have this gift placed at a, play, at a place in your home where you are reminded of this biblical truth every day so that you will live confidently for the Lord in this new identity. None of us are able to earn or achieve the status given to us based on our own strength. It is purely the abundance of God's grace and His agape love that He has chosen to bless us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. It is given to us in Christ. And let us continue to build on the new creation realities. Praise the Lord. Now, the first blessing of being in Christ is the new creation. A new creation in Christ. Let us look at 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
We know that nobody is able to be born again through the mother's womb. Therefore, it is not a physical experience, but a spiritual one. This born again experience happened at a time when we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts. It doesn't happen at water bapti baptism because baptism is an outward expression of our inward conviction. Only God is able to do it miraculously for us to be a new creation. We are saved the moment we believe and the new creation is in the heart. Also referred to as the spirit man or inner man. Now, you will be seeing a diagram on your screen right now where it shows you that we are a tripartite being. Namely, spirit, soul and body. It is the spirit mean being that is born again where we are accepted in Christ in our lives. The body will still look the same and the mind which is the realm of the soul needs to be renewed with the word of God so that we will live our life that is in line with the word. Our spirit man is the eternal being. We need to identify with the spirit being. We live our Christian life based on this new being in Christ. We need to fit the spirit being with the word of God. The spirit man is strengthened by the meditation of the word and hearing of the word and praying in the spirit man. We need to rule and reign through the spirit man, the new creation. If not the soul, which is uh, where the flesh is found, that wants to live independent of God will hinder our new life in Christ. It is in the soulish realm where we are very self-centered. It is in the soulish realm, if it is not renewed, we tend to live in the old lifestyle, in the old man. Therefore, God is encouraging us, including the Apostle Paul, to live in the new man. And we need to renew our mind with the word just as we are listening to the word right now so that we will live out the new identity in Christ rather than allow the old man to continue to rule and reign in our lives. And that's the place where the devil will deceive us that we are still under his dominion. The Apostle Paul is encouraging every believer to do, live out the new life in Christ. This new creation in Christ is found in the spirit man. The spirit man is found to be created according to God because God is spirit. Our spirit man is the real us who lives for eternity. It is the breath of air that God breathed into man that, that was made from dust and became a living being. It is the spirit man that is seen to be righteous and holy in God's sight. We are hidden in Christ. We have to begin to see ourselves as God sees us in Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul is referring to when he asks us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We are to see ourselves as God sees us in Christ, despite of the fact that we are still imperfect and has flaws in our lives. However, since we are born again, seen to be righteous and holy, then we are able to walk in victory over those temptations that used to hold us in bondage. It depends on what we choose to yield ourselves either to sin or to righteousness. Let us agree and say this after me. I am born again. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The new creation is created in righteousness and holiness. The second blessing is your past is under the blood. All of us have a past and has committed many mistakes that we don't even want to bring it up nor remember. Unfortunately, those past do haunt and condemn us, so it makes us feel unworthy to be in the presence of God. The devil will take hold of those sins and mistakes to condemn and accuse us continuously. The devil will use those mistakes that we have committed, including lifestyle that we had, to push us away from God. His accusation and condemnation come throughout the day. We need to remember that our old lifestyle committed under the old man with his old identity is under the blood of Jesus Christ. We will never feel worthy before God if we are to hold on to the past. Praise the Lord, we don't have to live under the old identity, but to put on the new man with the new identity in Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14 says, In whom? Now, whenever you read verses like in whom, in him, in Christ, it's talking about your position in Christ. It is your new identity, alright? There is a new start in your life. So in Colossians 1.14, when he says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Praise the Lord. So when you are hidden in Christ and that you are a new creation, you have no past. 
Your past is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? You have the complete forgiveness of sins. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12 says, For I am merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. These two scriptures reveal to us the character of God where He has chosen to completely wipe away our past sinful records with the blood of Jesus. We tend to look down or find difficulty in having direct eye contact with others when, we, when someone is living under the condemnation of the past. Jesus' blood has satisfied the wrath of God towards sinners. He does not punish us for our sins, but has chosen to forgive us through Jesus' redemption and the work of atonement on the cross. In the Old Testament, the sin of mankind were temporarily covered because of the animal sacrifices. There was a yearly reminder of the sins. However, in the new covenant established by the blood of Jesus Christ, it has completely removed our sinful records from the mind of God. He has chosen not to bring it up against us in future. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus because we are hidden in Christ. God has chosen to forgive us. He has blotted out our sinful record. Praise the Lord. This is that Jesus is the lifter of our head because He has redeemed us with His blood. This is who you are in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. The third blessing. Before I go to the third blessing, let us say it together, our confession of faith. I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. God does not remember my sins and lawless deeds no more. My past is under the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The third blessing is we belong to the kingdom of God. John 3, 5 says, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 17, verse 21 says, Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. We are the children of the King of Kings. Therefore, we belong to the kingdom of God. God reigns in our hearts. Therefore, the kingdom of God is within us. It has to do with the Lordship of Christ in our life, where Jesus reigns supreme in our hearts. We are to submit to the Lordship of Christ and you to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. He lives in our heart. Therefore, the kingdom of God is within us. We are the temple of the living God. Let us agree what the Word of God says about us. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. The new creation is created in true righteousness and holiness. I belong to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in my heart. I have no past because I'm a new, I'm a new creation. The blood of Jesus has washed away all my past. There is no record of my past in the eyes of God. God has chosen to forgive me and remembers my sins and lawless deeds no more. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the fourth blessing that we are a slave of righteousness. Romans chapter 6, verse 17 to 18 says, But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obey from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became a slave of righteousness. Romans 8, 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. This teaching is in line with what the Apostle Paul mentioned in the main passage for today. We were once upon a time walking in foolishness, having our understanding darkened and were living in deceitful lusts. However, once we have, been, we have believed and obeyed in our heart, then we are able to walk in victory to the new creation and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why he's saying that we are slaves of righteousness now. We have been set free. Example, the law of sin and death applies to everyone just like the law of gravity. We were subject to the, the slavery of sin when we were under the law of sin and death. Nobody was able to break free from it because it caused us to sin habitually. Therefore, it brings about condemnation in our hearts. However, we break free from the law of gravity when we apply the law of aerodynamics, uh, thus allowing us to take flight in an airplane. Likewise, we are able to break away from the law of sin and death when we apply the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Whenever we are tempted, we are seen to be in Christ as holy and righteous. Meanwhile, we are able to break away from the bondage of habitual sin. 
when we choose to apply the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus through the new creation and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there is no condemnation when we choose not to yield to temptation but walk away from it through the victory and the ability to reign in the new creation. We leave this law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus through the new identity. We live in a new kingdom. We have a new identity. We have, a new, we have new abilities through the power of the Holy Spirit enabling the new creation. Let us agree what the Word of God says about us. Say together with me, I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ. The new creation is created in righteousness and holiness. I belong to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in my heart. I'm a slave of righteousness. I have the, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in me. I'm able to walk in the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus that enables me to overcome the law of sin and death. I do not have a past. My past is under the blood of Jesus. Jesus does not, God does not remember my sins and lawless deeds no more. I have a clean record before God. The old has passed, the new has come. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, there are sorrows that come with the old identity and lifestyle. Thankfully, those mistakes that were made before we accepted Christ has been washed and completely forgotten by the Lord. We get to live out the new creation realities now. It is completely different kind of life and lifestyle. The only person whom we want to please and have as a cheerleader is God. Therefore, we stop striving to attain man's approval to establish our identity and security. It is liberating not having to prove ourselves to anybody except God. God has chosen to see us in Christ. We have come to a position of rest once we have our identity in Christ. Let us pray. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, I'd like to ask a very important question. If you're listening to this sermon, you're not a Christian, you do not have this new identity in Christ, you are not a slave of righteousness, you are under the bondage of sin, but you'd like to be set free today. I'd like to encourage you to receive Jesus into your heart by saying this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart today. Be my Lord and Saviour in Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer with me, you are a new creation. You belong to the family of God right now. We welcome you into God's family. We'd love to hear from you. My email address is written at the bottom of this page. Please write to me. I'd like to connect with you and send you some follow-up materials. And we would also like to inform you once our church reopens. Let me pray for the rest of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, I give you praise and thank that you have blessed us with all these new creation realities. All these new creation realities and spiritual blessing in the heavenly places comes from you. We give you praise and thanks that you love us with your agape love. You have loved us with an unconditional love. Help us to live out these new creation identities and realities in our lives. We know that our lives will be changed dramatically as we apply this truth into our lives. Help us to spur one another on as we live out this truth in our lives. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Hi Church, I'm Kathleen, and I'd love to thank all of you for your continuous support for ISIS and connecting with us through our online services during this period. We hope you've enjoyed and were greatly blessed by our weekly messages. And if you do, do show us some love and support by clicking the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below and be part of this family. Also, you may hit the notification bell to receive a weekly notification so you won't miss out on our brand new video which we post every Sunday. If you are new to SS and haven't already, Please don't forget to check us out on our website, Facebook, and Instagram as we post new updates every week. God bless you.